Texture Labs is back with a great tutorial on how to create grain shaded gradients using Photoshop. Let's do the same in Affinity Photo. The steps are quite easy to reproduce. First, we need to convert it to a grayscale image. A channel mixer is the perfect adjustment for this job. Change the mode to gray and we got ourselves a perfect grayscale image. The next step is to reduce the number of gray values to 5, for which we can use the posterize adjustment. After setting the level value to 5, we now have 5 grayscale values. To color it, a gradient map will be used. I will use a preset I have, which also have exactly 5 points. Each of these 5 points represent a gray value, which will be replaced. The transition between the colors is quite hard and the idea is to make the transition smoother, not by adding color, but by actually dithering it. A quick way is to just add noise. When we apply a live noise filter below the posterize adjustment, we get this noisy gradient effect we are looking for. By lowering the opacity of the noise adjustment, we can control the strength. Even though this works well, it is not the best way. In the Texture Labs video, he uses the soft light blend mode on the noise layer. If we change the blend mode of the noise filter to soft light, it kind of works. The opacity slider does not give a lot of control. So let me revert to the normal blend mode and show you a better alternative. We're going to add a fill layer and set its color to mid gray. Once we have the right gray tone, let's move it below the noise filter. Select both of them and group. Now we have an actual noise layer instead of a noise being applied to the grayscale image. The opacity of this noise group layer gives us much more control. We can change the blend mode of the noise group layer to soft light. Notice also that this does a much better job. Now I could wrap up this video, however, if you watch the Texture Labs video, he is using a reticulated layer as the noise, which gives a better result. Affinity Photo does not have a reticulation filter, but we can create something that kind of resembles it. So let's create the reticulated noise pattern. I'm going to start by adding a rectangle. The fill color is not really important. Before moving on, let me disable the layers above so we can see what is happening. The first thing I'm going to add to this rectangle in order to get a reticulated noise is a procedural texture filter. In the procedural texture dialog, select the Perlin noise preset and then change the number of octaves to 16, slightly decrease contrast and decrease the cell count to 10. This will render the rectangle to a soft cloudy noise. Now we need to add a high pass filter and make sure it is above the procedural texture filter. In the high pass dialog, increase the radius until you just start seeing something. In my case, this is around 0.6 pixels. To get the noise, we are just going to add a threshold adjustment and leave the threshold at 50. The noise we have is black and white and we need to have a more mid-gray noise in order to have it work. We can do that with a levels adjustment, but before adding the levels adjustment, let's make sure the threshold adjustment is above the high pass. I can now add the levels adjustment and move it above the threshold adjustment. By adjusting the output black and white level, we can convert this black and white noise to a more dimmed gray noise. Awesome! We now have a noise that looks more like the noise pattern Texture Labs used. Let's enable the top layers and lower the opacity of the noise layer we just created to get the noise gradient look. I'll zoom out and make sure the rectangle with the noise is covering the whole canvas. Optionally, you can add a noise filter adjustment above the procedural texture for a more refined noise. Let's test this noise pattern in soft light. Looks good. As we work non-destructively, we can fine-tune the noise. 
for example, by adjusting the levels adjustment. But also the channel mixer is a good candidate to fine tune the effect. For those who really want to have the exact same reticulated noise, no problem. I just created the reticulated noise in Photoshop. Link for download will be in the description. Let me disable the current noise and drag and drop the generated noise from Photoshop. Let's position it under the posterize and lower the opacity. Excellent. The noise pattern is a bit too thick for this image, but I can zoom out and resize the imported image to get a more finer look. Let's zoom back in. Pretty cool. Actually, the effect is a halftone effect. And for the ones who watched my video last week might remember I shared some common pattern assets. If you want to know more about that, link is in the description. For fun, to make the image more interesting, let's add some diagonal lines above the noise pattern. I'm going to quickly increase the number of lines and add a levels adjustment to remove the hard white and blacks. Let's now decrease the opacity of the lines group. We got ourselves a noised line gradient. Pretty awesome. Here is the effect without the noise. Not bad at all. Just like with the noise pattern, we can adjust the opacity or change the blend mode to soft light to get very interesting looks. But what is even more awesome, and as a thank you for all my supporters and especially a big thanks who are still watching, I have created a free asset for all of you. Check the message on the screen. After installing the asset file, you can directly use it by dragging and dropping it on an image. Here you go. That's freaking cool, isn't it? It contains a small usage guide, but we can remove that from the group. And there you have it. Instant noise gradient, which you can easily modify to your needs. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next video.